trigger spins you. That's a nice fish, too. Felt like a ton of bricks. We'll see. Been tough here today. No doubt about it. That was right at about 20 feet. Man, what a strike. Trigger Spoon Jr., baby. Man, that's a good spoon. It's going right at 1.8 when that fish hit. Daddy, look at that big rainbow. Right there, Trigger Spoon Jr. Woo! Woo! Oh, that's a stud right there. What a beauty. Look at that hefty rainbow. Man, that's a nice fish. Jumped all over that orange Trigger Spoon Jr. It's a tough bite out here today. It's trolling at 1.8 miles an hour, about 20 feet. Do you want results next time you go trout fishing? Get yourself a set of Trigger Spoons and put a limit on the stringer. They flat out produce. Folks, Cal Kellogg here. I don't think you've ever seen me film from this spot before. I'm way back here in the back corner of my yard behind my utility shed because I got a lot of wind today and it doesn't take much wind to blow my microphone out. And I really wanted to film today. So I think we got enough shelter so you're getting pretty good sound. Um, I got a viewer question from a guy named Jerry Nelson in Chico, California, and he wanted to know when to fish a large spoon and when to choose a smaller spoon. So, here we go, Jerry. Um, you know, I've touched on this several times in the last few weeks, I'm talking big picture here. I like to start out large and fast with something like a speed spoon, uh, a large needlefish, crocodile, whatever your choice of spoon is, I like to start out with something large that I control quickly. quickly. Now, I might catch fish on that, I might not, but I'm gonna cover a lot of water, I'm going to locate fish, if nothing else, and then that's going to give me something to work from. Now, maybe I catch fish on this right away, and then the bite dies. Bottom line is, I'm going to start off large and fast, and then I'm going to work down through the sizes, you know. If I want to slow down from, say, 2.5 to 3 miles an hour to, you know, 1.5 to 1.8 miles an hour, I'm going, to, I'm going to downsize to a Trigger Spoon Junior that's a little over an inch long. I'm going to cut the speed down and uh, I'm gonna see if that works. If I'm still not successful with that change, you know, I might drop my speed all the way down to one mile an hour and run something like that tiny little Dick Knight spoon right there. Bottom line is, I'm gonna start off large, fast, and aggressive, and then I'm gonna downsize, and I'm gonna slow down until I get something that the fish will hit. Now, that's the big picture. It's also important to, uh, to know your lakes and to also, you know, use your powers of observation when you're out on the water. Let me give you an example of that. Um, lake Shasta in the early spring. That's a threadfin shad lake. You know, later in the summer, those shad are that long. But early in the spring, they are tiny. Now, I'm still going to hit the water and I'm going to be aggressive early on. But as the day goes on, you know, you can, you can catch those aggressive fish on the large, fast moving spoon. It's a reaction strike. But as the day goes on and the bite just kind of naturally slows down as the light level increases, I'm going to be much better served by matching the hatch. Match the hatch, catch the fish. And uh, just from experience, I know that over the course of the day, I'm going to get more hits at Shasta on something like this Trigger Spoon Junior early in the spring than I'm going to get on this big giant needlefish. Now, that's great if you know the lake, you know the forage and all that. The other factor is, is you need to observe. You need to kind of see what's going on. You need to look for, for injured minnows on the surface of the lake. And if you see one, you know, one that's been hit by a fish and he's kind of half dead, or one that's even dead floating on the surface, note the size, note the shape. When you catch a fish, you might want to cut them open, and see what's in there. Lots of times when you land a trout and they're feeding on bait fish, they'll spit up bait fish right aside of the boat or even in the bottom of the boat once you get them in the net. So use your powers of observation, you know, be observant. And if you notice that the, that the trout are spitting up little tiny minnows, by all means, cut your speed, break out the little tiny dick knight 
And if that's the pattern, it's not gonna take very long to, to figure out that that's what they want. You're not gonna have to troll this thing around for an hour to see if it's a game changer. You're gonna know right away. 10 or 15 minutes, you're gonna be catching fish on that if that is the change that you needed to make based on what you saw. You know, I was up and uh, I was up at Elmanor here a while back. You might remember this video. And I was really kind of bummed. Um, first day I went out, it was not easy. Um, I caught one fish on an orange trolling fly. I caught it. That, that was a decent fish. He had some copa pods. He was decent. Then I caught a couple smaller fish on the orange fly. And then I tried, I have one on me right now. I put on an orange and chrome uh, trigger spoon. And I caught a really nice 23 inch, or trigger spoon junior rather. I caught a really nice 23 inch rainbow. Now when I got that fish in and I cleaned it, he was full of little tiny pond smell. Well, I, I had that hatch matched. I had some little flies. I had some other small spoons. I had some silver, silver on silver trigger spoon juniors. I was all rigged up. I was ready to fish. I know I would have done really well the next day, but unfortunately the wind came up. So, and I didn't get the fish. I ended up going to Sugar Pine Reservoir and I caught a bunch of trout out there and other stuff. But I was really anxious to show those smaller smelt imitations to those big old rainbows at Lake Elmanor. Oh well. But anyway, Jerry, that's it in a nutshell. One, start off big and aggressive, slow down, downsize until you start catching fish. That's big picture every day, every lake I fish, pretty much. And uh, beyond that, try to match your lures to the size of the forage the fish are feeding on. And a final thought, okay? Pressure spooks trout, all right? Whether they're in a stream or a lake or whatever. Um, a lot of fishing pressure will put the trout off the bite to some extent, okay? If you're fishing a lake where there's a lot of pressure, conditions look good, hasn't been a big change, but you're struggling to catch fish, that is a great time to downsize your spoons. That is a great time for a Trigger Spoon Junior or a Little Dick Knight, something like that. Something very subtle, very unobtrusive. I learned this decades ago when, when I was fly fishing a lot. I would go to a stream like Hat Creek, granted, they're planted trout, but you would go to a campground and you'd see a big group of trout come right out of the truck. They've been finning around there. There might be, you know, two or three dozen trout. And you'll see guys with salmon eggs and spinners and spoons. And nobody can get these fish to bite. They're simply spooked. I would come along. I would put on a tiny little caddis nymph. They're from the hatchery. They don't know what a caddis nymph is. But it was very small very subtle, I would go right in front of these bait and gear guys, flip that fly out there, and start catching fish after fish after fish, and when they stopped hitting that, I would go even smaller and try a color change. So if I was using a cream-colored caddis, I caught some fish on that, and that bite slowed down, I would go even smaller and go with something that was all black, and sure enough, the bite would reignite again. It's all about the fish being spooked, the fish almost being trained not to hit. So there you go, that's a side tip. So three things, fast and aggressive, and then slow down and downsize throughout the course of the day. Two, try to match your spoon to the size of the forage the fish are feeding on, and if you think the bite is shutting down because of pressure, that's a great time to downsize regardless of the size of the forage, because fish that are spooked, oftentimes they'll ignore the big stuff, but they will jump all over the little stuff, and that can really save your day. Anyway, Jerry, hope to see you out on the water soon. I am Kel Kellogg. I'm signing off for now. I want to thank everybody out there for all the support you guys have been giving the channel, and if you're looking for tw uh, top quality trout gear, go on to the Fish Hunt Shoot Productions website and check out our store. It's full of spoons and shad tubes, rods, reels, and more. Um, it's the gear you see me fishing on the channel, stuff that I stand behind and stuff that I offer up at a fair price to all our viewers out there in uh, in YouTube land and, cross, and across the western United States. I can't even talk. Uh, anyway, I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm going to jump off for now. Please hit that subscribe button there and hit that notification bell and you'll always know when I'm on here on YouTube 
talking fishing. Anyway, you have a great day and I will catch you later. Thanks a lot.